Joe Bonamassa Black Beauty reached me safely and packed well. I embarrassingly did almost damage the case by not realizing it has double-sided latches. Luckily I didn't, and I opened the case to see the guitar in perfect shape. I immediately had to pick it up and play. I didn't film that, sorry, but my first impression of the guitar was that it's incredibly comfortable and very fast. The 50s neck profile is surprisingly one of the most comfortable I've ever used and not at all intimidating. Back to the case though, since there's little case candy in there. You've of course got the certificate of authenticity. There's a picture of Joe with a guitar. It's unlikely that's the exact guitar, or I imagine they'd be numbered. There's also a case key and a toggle switch cap, a sticker, and a hang tag. Sound-wise, the first thing I'm obsessed with is that neck pickup. For cleans and gains, I love the balance of the density of the lows without it sounding muddy. The middle position is something special too, and a sound I look forward to exploring more. Feel-wise, I'll mention again how much I love the neck, and add that the fretwork is great too. Nothing high or sharp. The frets and fingerboard are dry though, so I'll take care of that in the next video. Hopefully it'll stop making my fingers dirty. Regardless, the playability is perfect and the action is nice and low without any buzzing. The electronics feel great too, thanks to clean wiring and soldering. Those 500k CTS pots respond smoothly, and the orange drop capacitors color the tone nicely. This Les Paul Custom feels great, sounds great, and it looks great. I love the new Epiphone headstock, and it really shines with the binding. I also love that Epiphone finally made the split diamond the same size as this Gibson counterpart. The model-inspired machine heads are such a cool touch too. They've got a red dye mixed in that fits the overall aged aesthetic of the guitar very well. Most importantly though, they stay in tune. Even with the terrible winding from the factory that prevented me from tuning to standard, it held tuning from D sharp to drop C. As you'd expect though, the intonation is off, but what's important is that it stays in tune. When I take care of the fretboard and change the strings, I don't expect to have any issues adjusting the intonation. I'll adjust the pickup height to my liking too. I had a great first day with this guitar. The only issue I had was with the amp. The speakers of the Spark just don't work for me especially not with game tones. The direct and headphone sound is good though, 
so I know this amp can still serve someone very well, and because of that, I'll be launching an email sign-up giveaway for it once I reach 1,000 subscribers. It'll be open to everyone, but if you've enjoyed this video or you'd like to see my upcoming videos, including ones with this Les Paul, please do subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I appreciate your time spent watching this video, so thank you for watching.